Hello, welcome back to the Idrisian Kingdom campaign on Total War Rome 2. I keep bouncing back and forth between a couple of different campaigns I'm doing right now, so I always have to take a minute to catch back up to speed. Now, if I remember right, we were trying to move this way and take the war up here. Is that true, or were we going to conquer this province real quick? Okay, yeah, we were going to conquer down here, and then we could just hold these three cities at a choke point, and then push up north. Because we aren't at war up here yet, so I didn't want to start anything up there. Now, these guys, very beat up. I'm trying to chase them down, but it looks like I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, right before the end of a turn. Our finances are looking great. I don't love that these guys are in my area. Are they at war with someone and they're going out to chase them? Is that why? No, they're just hanging out in my territory. That's a little weird. Stealing my food, no doubt. Alright, a quick provincial check. So let's see, we're building the commercial capital. <clears throat> which is going to cost us one food, which means to counter for that, we need to add food somewhere. Now this, unfortunately, adds banditry, but our banditry is looking okay in this province so far. But this province will be in the hole for food for ten turns. Not the end of the world. Because I obviously have enough food across my whole faction. Okay, now in Athens, what did we just dismantle there? So this is one of the problems of <laughs> taking so many breaks in between recording this stuff. <laughs> I forget what on earth I was doing. Well, let's see, what does this place need? Were we trying to get banditry down here? Are we trying to get cultural conversion? Because it... Yeah, maybe we should get some cultural conversion here. Um... Because so we're looking good on food. Well, this might just be rebuilding the exact building I just dismantled. <clears throat> but... I don't remember. What I'm thinking is to go for this building because it gives me food and takes away banditry. I might convert this to a temple later. Nah, I'm going to convert it now. Okay, so that's Macedon reviewed and taken care of. We're doing good on food here. So let's knock that in. Now, Roma. What do we need in Rome? See, again, this looks like something I dismantled, but I don't know what I was going to replace it with. Workshop, maybe? Uh, we'll probably go for this again just to get the banditry down, because banditry's already creeping up over here. We're going to have to replace some of these three buildings, but we can take care of that later. Alright, so the provinces look okay. This dude is coming back. Okay, yeah, that confirms that we were definitely going down this direction. The Fury is still just hanging out here. Funky's Fieldmen are back up to full strength and will be assaulting south soon enough. These guys are playing catch up. Alright. Let's end the turn. Just kidding, let's not end the turn.
Hmm. Let's go ahead and leave that one in for now. And just put some tax harvesting. Ooh. Decreased public order. Why is that? Whatever. We'll stick some extra taxes in there. Now we can enter. No, duh, that's... <laughs> Wait a minute, how many edicts can we have? Did I cancel a bunch of edicts somewhere else? So that's building construction time. Growth, 15% recruitment cost. Let's actually switch this one over to tax rate. And I guess stick one in there as well. How many edicts can we have? It seems weird that we can already have five edicts. I guess we did just hit the next Imperium level. Oh, and let's also recruit spies and champions too. Let's do that. So I'm going to have one spy over here. Alright, well, change of plans. I'm still going to send him up there. We'll just recruit a spy down here. I like the plus five line of sight. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and then a champion. Which army needs a champion? Probably Funky's Fieldmen. Candy's Conquerors. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and recruit a champion here. And then just slip him into Candy's Conquerors. So he's a good anti... Like, he's a good solo agent. This is probably who I will go with for the experience and the upkeep and morale, attack skill. Yeah, he's definitely the better candidate. Alright. That's what happens when I need to catch up on a campaign eight times before actually getting everything taken care of, but now we're up to Spirits have no distance. My movement is going to be severely limited through this province once it's winter. I think this should chase them off. Unfortunately, I'll take some attrition for going in there. I wonder if I should have just left them in there. Ignored the attrition. But in any case, they've been dealt with. We've got plenty of money, so let's not bother releasing them. Now what I'm thinking is these guys and the spearmen can kind of just defend over here, because I'm... I'd rather do the attacking with my actual armies. Those guys have been downsized. Alright. Now that we've got enough over here to defend Sirisena, I can take this army away. And have them move on the offensive. 
In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and drop these guys into patrol, hopefully help boost the replenishment just a little bit. 24 elites, huh? Maybe we do have enough elites to re replenish those armies. Okay, that's repaired, so let's convert it. I said I was converting this to a temple, right? Ooh. No, temple. This is getting made into the food and anti-banditry building. As will this. Okay. So we spent enough money. How are our taxes? Are we keeping it a medium? Okay. What would happen if we boosted it? So we would double our income if we boosted taxes right now. We would probably massacre our public order. I'm going to go ahead and just drop this guy in to get some supplies before I forget. Because he has another two turns worth of supplies, but I'm just going to do it now. Okay, spy, you need to move. Yeah, just go hang out there. You need to move. Are any other agents in need of redeploying? Nope, the Fury is still hanging out. Everyone else has moved. All right, let's end the turn. Hmm. Well, that's a little embarrassing. I must have clicked through all of my dignitaries or governors and not realized that one wasn't deployed. Okay, I don't really care about discovering my defensive allies' hidden army on the other side of the world. Or the other side of the map, I suppose. Steady as we go. Is there nothing else? No sleep. Hey, an extra four gold per turn, that's cool. How bad is the movement range going to be? Not great. Not terrible, but not great. Now, what are the odds of these guys having an army already? I am at war with them, right? I'm pretty sure they declared war on me. Yes, okay. And that was the deciding factor in me coming down here. Alright, let's run just past the border and see what we see. So they've got a 15 stack and a very, very small garrison. So we can undoubtedly take that with this army. But will this army be healthy enough to hold against a possible counterattack from two 20 stacks? Let's give it a shot, what do you say? Alright, well they have five units of cavalry, I have five units of cavalry. So we at least have enough cav to tie them down. We outskirmish them pretty heavily. 
So let's actually play this one just a little bit slow. Because they have a lot of hoplites, so they can do some damage to the pikes, but not like a ton. So let's go ahead and just play this one defensive at the beginning. I might send the Peltists over to help with their ships, because the AI loves to land their ships over here on this map. We'll keep the General over here to help out with that as well, and then we'll stack our cab on this side. Because we match their cav in terms of numbers, but I think they their cav is much heavier. And it's melee cav, so they will probably actually win the cavalry fight if it's unsupported. Is this everyone? No, it's not. The archers. Alright. Now let's see what their fleet does. Raiding ship of archers. So three units of archers. If they don't charge out at me, I'll just send the cav over instead of the peltists. Just so we can deal with it quicker. But I think this is what they mostly have, is this heavy phalanx infantry. Medium shock cav... I think they've got like five units of that medium shot cav, so that's a little bit scary. But they're not charging out. Okay, let's rotate the cavalry over. But we need to stay a little bit far away. You know what, I think I will send the Peltus over just to give them some free experience, because they can cut through these archers probably pretty easily. Now I do have to stay back because if they have, <clears throat> if I'm within range of them, instead of landing, they'll just shoot me. So I need to stay back until they land. And as soon as those ships go to land, I can charge at them. We'll send the infantry now, because it's slower. And it takes them a minute to get off of the boats. Okay, that was weird. Why did this ship, like, bounce backwards? Are they not going to land? Okay, we'll send the cab over now. No, nope, go this way. Okay, we'll start moving up the rest of the infantry. Support these guys on that flank. Support these guys over here. Send the archers around behind. We may have gone too slow with this. These peltists are actually moving pretty quick. Okay, we'll send the peltists there and send the cav around and try and catch this unit. Come on, come on. Go quicker. Yeah, see, they can outrun my Peltus, though. Okay, let's just see if we can go catch them and slow them down enough for the infantry to get in. Put the general on. Not fire at will. I don't know if we're going to catch them. And I might have just stopped my own cav charge by doing that. Okay, at least one of their cav units is skirmish cav. Come on, you guys. Attack through. Peltus, get in there. Okay, we're going to pull the general back, actually. Because he just doesn't need to be in this fight. Yeah, I'm really enjoying using these royal peltus or noble peltus or whatever they are because they perform well in melee and obviously they have pretty heavy missile damage and i know i just talk them up all the time but i just have fun using them they might not even be a particularly good unit but i have fun using them okay their hoplites are moving up but i mean there's no chance they're going to catch me before i break this unit i don't think and then we just run because they're not going to be able to chase me either 
Now they will have some javelin fire. I'm shocked that these guys aren't firing at me. Let's go ahead and just run now. I'll take you guys out of melee mode. Is that going to get their whole army to come over here? If so, I would love that, because I can just send pikes this way. Let's at least get the pikes in the position. I really do need to recruit more pikes, because I've lost a couple of units by now. Oh, you guys, run! Might have to send the light shock cav back in to save these couple of... Nah, these guys will get out. I mean, a couple of them will die, but that's okay. Uh, that's a little awkward. Okay, let's get the pikes up there and maybe pay back some of these losses. Because I don't know why the units are being all screwed up. Pikes, let's get you in position and then drop you down into a phalanx. Oh man. Make it quick, guys. Cav. Just get out of there, whatever. That's not a good engagement for you. I gotta send another unit of pikes over here to help out. I just said leave that, not get back in it. Alright, mercenary cav, your turn to get killed. Okay, so it looks like they're probably going to just sit, at, like, all charge over here. So let's maybe send the nobles and some swords out this way. Because I think we can basically lock them in over here. Send the remaining pikes over here as reserves. Send the spears and the archers over. Because we need to tell that we need to give these guys an attack order too. Otherwise they just won't perform very well. because I actually just did some testing and you have to give an attack order. Even if your unit is defending, you need to give an attack order or else they won't do much damage to the enemy units. Yeah, I basically lost that unit, so that was poor play by me. Let's just let them get out of there. These guys get up front. You guys keep coming around, you guys keep coming around. Archers, get into guard mode. One of you come over here. The other two of you come here. Okay, Peltusts. Um, yeah, hit some of their... Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, hit some of their phalanx infantry. We're going to do a little bit of friendly fire here, I think. But take down their phalanx infantry because they will be the most capable of damaging me, I think. Okay, that's good for that volley. You guys shoot into their flank. You guys shoot into the mob, I suppose. I do still need to bring my spears up to the main line. Steady, holy cow, why are these guys so upset already? Well, let's bring the general up, because it's going to put him in range of missile fire, but we need the support up here now. Let's move these guys into position. These guys are doing well, so let's just put the, spear, or the remaining pikes on this side. You guys, chuck your ammo here. Everyone back here, get in there and just start shooting. You three, keep running up here. Okay, so that unit of spears used all of its ammo. So let's go ahead and rotate them back. This unit of spears will rotate them forward. So far I'm not impressed with these pikes. I know they're just like medium pikes, but they're not 
accomplishing much for me. Let's see if we can draw some of their units back away from the front line. Let's go ahead and drop these guys into position and then rotate them forward. Just to try and save those other two units. Just walk them into that. Once they kind of get up into this line, then we'll switch things out. You guys hit these lighter units. Archers, everyone focus on these hoplites. You guys are supposed to run. Now you two are going to come hold this off. You guys are going to support the cavalry. Which we might just tell to go into melee with this shock cav. Okay, you guys move forward. You guys move forward. You guys and is it you? Okay. You guys break flanks and fall back because you were not performing admirably there. Shoot those hoplites still. Okay. Send these guys here for a moment. These two up to here. Put them on fire at will. Move these guys right behind and put them on fire at will. Okay, the archers are out of ammo now. So let's have the peltists throw some stuff in there. Okay, the pikes appear to be doing better now. Let's go ahead and give a charge for these guys, try and break this up a little bit. Start the Thracian warriors moving forward. Set these guys moving up. I don't like how tight these formations are going to have to be, but, you know, things happen. Let's bring the general up, do a war cry, try and break some of these guys. So it didn't quite work there, but let's do an inspire to boost our combat abilities for a moment. As soon as these guys get in position, we're charging, which means these guys all need to be off of fire at will soon. Okay, you guys get in on the flank, get your charge, you guys go join them on that side, you guys go over here. You guys go ahead and just use your ammo however you feel like. Okay, we don't want spears going up against hoplites, so we'll just drop them back. Hopefully that doesn't bust our formation too bad. Even if it does, let's rotate the other unit of pikes in. We'll let them walk so they don't get too tired. Cavalry, go ahead and... You know what, you guys just get up here and start doing your thing. Okay, now my front line of pikes is doing well. These guys got a little bit surrounded, so let's actually move some help in for them. That's okay, he's got the armor, he can take it. These guys have lost two men. How many kills do they have? Seventy. So even from a somewhat tired unit, a rear charge like this can be just devastating. You guys just come up here and start shooting everything you can. We've got another war cry available. Let's try and break their general. I doubt it'll... Oh! That actually worked. I'm impressed. I did drop their pikes. Let's go ahead and charge these guys in. Let's get the 
Now that their hoplites are gone, let's get the peltas in as well. we'll start to charge them instead of just holding them in place. Okay, we can take a few casualties now, so let's just go ahead and charge everyone in there. I don't know why these peltas are being so buggy. Can we already do another war cry? Not yet. Let's go ahead and do a rally. It doesn't really do anything to help us, but whatever. Maybe it'll give my boy some more experience. Alright, well, I was disappointed by my first line of probably got a huge amount of kills in that, but it's got this many kills on hoplites. I think that's a good trade for bikes. It's always funny to me to watch that curved blade do a stab. Alright, well, so we wiped the army. And the garrison and the fleet obviously doesn't really matter. Let's just occupy that, maybe? Ah, screw it, let's loot it. Okay. So they do have enough to actually launch a pretty substantial attack against me. They'd have a 22-man attack. But it looks to me like my pikes are still healthy enough that we could hold them back. for the public order for now because we're going to need to start reversing that soon and I'm going to leave these guys in the settlement garrisoned just so that if these guys decide to attack I can defend some choke points wow look at that movement range Alright, let's actually check this a little bit more carefully this time. What kinds of armies do they have? So they actually have some melee cav, which is nice. Those guys look funky. What the heck? But again, it's like exclusively cavalry. Oh boy. Yeah, there's going to be some auto-resolving to do up here. Alright, but he's done the moving he needs to. You need to move and deploy. Alright, so it looks like these guys are almost out of the picture. Because they've only got those two... Between those two armies, they've basically got 120 stack remaining. The Fury is still camping out. And I've got to keep them there for as long as I am bordered by hostile nations. Because I can't afford to send an army back around here and leave nothing to defend, so I'd rather just hold one army at a choke point. Look at Pergamon. I'm thinking my next campaign that I'm going to record and upload, I'm going to play as Pergamon. I had to decide between that and Armenia, and Pergamon sounds really fun. Well, I, I say I had to decide between them, I only had to decide between them because that's the ones I was interested in. Alright, so we just finished Oak Construction.
really none of these are particularly enticing. I don't. I kind of like the idea of getting the plus five percent replenishment by doing these two. Let's see if anything else tempts me first. Let's go ahead and do this, because I have found out that you cannot upgrade your siege weapons. So, in this army, like... What this building... Excuse me, let me find where I actually have one. Is it just Macedon? Alright, so this building, when you get to level 2 and level 3, it gives you more damage for your missile... Your, your siege weapons on recruitment, but it's only on recruitment. You can't just send them back here and have them improve their armor and weapons like you can with infantry and cavalry. So you actually have to recruit them if you want that damage bonus. So I think I want to go for that damage bonus now so I can get the higher end. So I can get ballista and other siege equipment that does more damage and then get them up to high veterancy because right now these guys are level 2. If Even if these guys were level 9 veterans, I would still disband them and re-recruit for the extra missile damage because it jumps the missile damage up by a lot. You guys are still just hanging out. You know what, since I know these guys don't really have much of an army to come attack me with, I'm actually going to start the spearmen heading up north. It's going to take a while because we move slow in this province and obviously winter kind of murders our movement range. We're going to need the siege equipment for this battle, so we still have to bring... Ooh, that one's going to be tough. That's a lot of phalanx infantry. So before I can even realistically try to take this city, I'm going to need to replenish. Warriors all! But in any case, I've been messing about on this turn too much. Oh, I need to check my faction characters too. Because I need to make sure we're growing the family tree. Okay, let's actually... He's not ready to get married, but let's send him on a mission to make them a little happier. Hermes would surely bless you if trade between our peoples was allowed. Do not annoy us. A token, perhaps a modest gift of course. Will you not give up? So doing what we can to reduce banditry over here. Where else was I building stuff? Banditry is quite high in this province, too. build here to reduce banditry further.
thought one of these did banditry. I guess not. Well, I know that this building will reduce banditry. But maybe instead of worrying about banditry, maybe I'll just go for economy down here. So we'll build that, because these buildings are really flexible. They have tons of options. We'll build that one. Here again, trying to deal with banditry. And that has the added bonus of providing food. Just make sure things are squared away in these provinces real quick. We're in the hole on food. That should be fixed. Nope, we're only gaining four food, and then we're losing an additional three. So we're only going up by one food in this province, so we need to change something to get more food here. Let's swap this out for something that gives me food instead of taking food. Go into a civil settlement here so we can get the public order boost. Drive these guys back into the mountains, because I'm certain they will retreat. And instead of chasing them this time, we are just going to fall back. Because that'll force them to take a little bit of attrition. I'm kind of scared of this royal cav. You know what? Normally I wouldn't do this because I prefer to keep native units, but why not? Let's get one of these guys. Now, can we recruit anything decent here? No. Caucasian levies. Okay. That was mostly a curiosity check. Now we're going to need food. We're getting food out of this, but we're going to need more food for the whole province, so we may as well just stick that in. Now, there's no way this army is going to attack this army, so I feel confident putting them in patrol. With these guys, you know what? Let's actually get... I'm thinking maybe get a little aggressive and just try and clear these guys up quick. What kind of garrison do they have here? So they actually have a pretty tough garrison. 12 units of hoplites, and I don't have any pikes. I have mostly cavalry, which against hoplites are going to struggle. But, you know, maybe we can reduce their income by just besieging it or something. I don't know. We'll see in a moment. We'll see in not too long. That is dangerous, because if these guys were to move in and besiege, or get close, then we could potentially be up against, what, 30? No, 36 units? That's not right. We could potentially be up against 42. So a twin stack with our somewhat depleted force here. So you know what? I'm actually going to bail out of this city. I will go ahead and leave this constructing, but I'm just going to bail on it. We need more troops to take that city and hold it. I don't want to lose Funky's Fieldmen to a stupid... Like, holding on to a city that I don't necessarily need to hold on to. 
right, anything else here interesting? I wish you could see which army retreated here, but whatever. Make sure everyone's deployed. And I'm actually going to start recruiting another army because we have the money for it. How are we doing for population up here? We don't have much. It's all mostly foreigners still. I mean, that is a lot of growth in the foreigner category. And this is going to make things a bit more difficult because it'll take me like four turns to get a full stack recruited and then it'll take me another like six to get them over here. But we're going to need another army for these battles anyway. So let's start here, maybe get one siege unit. Now who do we recruit as the general? We might actually just go with this guy. So we can send him off to get enough gravitas to get married this turn. We can get him married give him the campaign movement range give him the one-eyed veteran give her that one I guess And Tattooed Madman, now Roygos, is our new general. 13,000 to recruit someone else. So this is, if nothing else, this is one good reason to actually pay attention to your factional family tree. It's because you can save yourself a lot of money on new generals, and you can, like, always have generals available. So obviously he has a lot of penalties against him. But that'll be okay. Dacian Noble Horse Archers? Since when is that an option? I actually might get these guys. They don't have a ton of armor, but it's not much worse than that unit. Their armor penetration is way better. You know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and get these guys. The only thing that really is worse is their charge bonus, and even that isn't so bad. Weapon damage is worse, too, but you know what? Screw it. Let's get this unit. Now, we've got to recruit our siege weapon now. Oh, I, th I was hoping we would have, like, a scorpion-type unit available to recruit, but I guess not. So instead, we'll go ahead and just get one of these. Now, I intend this to be a field army, but a field army that has artillery. So I'm not building them to be a siege army. We have so many freemen down here. Okay, so we're pretty low on elites across the board. But let's maybe do this. put a bunch of hoplites in this army. We'll, well, we'll probably go about half and half hoplites and swords. Okay, now is that everything we need to do? I think so. Let's end the turn there. 
Now, I could have left this army in and just hope that they didn't attack me. Or that they didn't combined arms attack me. Because I definitely could have taken this army. I definitely could have taken this army. I could have taken either of these by themselves. But I don't think I could have survived against all three of them. Your people. But it's looking like I should probably have left my army in here. Because these guys... Well, these guys may not have attacked. I don't know. We'll just stick with what I did and hope it was the right choice. Because definitely pushing one army by itself to take this settlement was being more aggressive than I normally would be. A simple tribute is... avoid breaking alliances especially ones that I think I spent money on is always stronger when brothers stand together that is why I offer a treaty I was tempted to do that because it was relatively cheap but I don't think I need it that bad My people are proud as are yours but pride does not stop a man having friends Um, I don't think we're doing a ton of trade, so let's go with agriculture for now. Although now that I think about it, we are doing quite a bit of trade. Oh well, maybe a mistake there. Alright. See, these guys are going to start... I'm really glad that Bosphorus took this city, because it means these guys will continue to take heavy attrition. And in the meantime, I can just kind of sit pretty on the border and wait to swoop back in. You may as well get settled in, lads. You guys go ahead and just come up to the border, try and stay out of the marshland so you don't get attrition for no reason. You lot are going this way. All right, so we actually can't quite reach yet anyway. So let's maybe just move up to here and raid for a turn. Boosts our income by about a thousand. Now none of these armies should be in range to attack me, so I'm going to go ahead and patrol up here. Now what I would like to do is engage these guys over here with this army create a situation that I can win with these guys and engage over here so that this army just has to deal with the garrison and whatever they have hired. Of course, they are going to have an extra five units next turn. But in any case, things are looking good so far. Can we recruit larger units yet? No. It's interesting that we don't have enough free men, but we have enough warriors here. Alright, another double check on the provinces, because I feel like I'm doing a lot of construction stuff that I need to actually pay attention to. Let's get you moving in the right direction again. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and get another one of them. So we'll have a five-man, or a five-unit pike line then we'll also get some swords and again I'm trying to recruit from here because this place the population will have more time to build back up because it is further away from the front 
And so, like, for example, if I were to somehow get pushed all the way back through here, I would want a lot of population closer to the front so I can quickly replenish or I can quickly recruit more. Where, right now, where I have time, I don't mind recruiting and just running them through here and pulling some population from each city. Make sure things are going well over here. Banditry's still high, but public order and food are in the green. Go ahead and get you a little bit more influence this turn. I know we're spending a lot of money on that, but we have a lot of money, so it's okay. This guy's ready to get married. Why not? Now, again, I want to boost my influence up so I can get to here. But I don't want to do it at the expense of loyalty. Because these nobles actually own a province, if I remember right. Well, not quite, but they do have some hold over here, so I don't want them to revolt. Anyway, let's not end the turn. Let's check on our spies and governors. Alright, once I get this maxed out, I don't really care, because that's kind of all I use the spies for in this game, is just stealing food. Now these guys, on the other hand... Wealth from all sources... Better replenishment... Tax rate while deployed, or empire maintenance. For now, let's go ahead and go with that. I'm not too concerned about... Well, let's do the empire maintenance as the next one. Empire maintenance shouldn't be too high just yet. I should be able to check that, shouldn't I? Yeah, so I mean, that hurts, but it's not crazy high just yet. 77%, so it's manageable. Weep when men battle fruitless. Looks like the unrest isn't really hurting us too bad. Alright, now they did leave their army in here. I'm not replenishing, so holding this turn isn't going to do me any good in terms of replenishment. If I were to attack them now, their garrison would still be minimal. And I could probably have a similar outcome to the last time I attacked this city, where I lose, I don't know, maybe a, a sixth of my total pike line and then not much else, in exchange for destroying an entire army. But I'll just leave it for now. I'll keep these guys... well, let's see, we can get here and raid, right? I'm just hoping we won't take winter attrition over there. Let's get here and raid. It's still going to take us probably another two or three turns to get over here. Now let's see what kind of odds this auto-resolve gives us. That's actually way better than I would have expected, given that all of these are phalanx infantry. But hey, we'll give it a shot. I think that'll be the start to our next episode, so if you guys are enjoying, keep watching. And we'll see you in the next one.